It is now law in the state of California. Governor Jerry Brown called it a gut-wrenching decision as he signed the so-called right to die legislation, allowing people in certain cases to decide the date, time, and manner of their death. Only four other states have such a law, and the groundswell is there for more to join the effort. Here's background with Miranda Kahn. Miranda? Thanks, Ed. The law is based on a similar measure in Oregon, which allows doctors to prescribe drugs to terminally ill patients as long as two doctors agree that the patient only has six months to live and is mentally competent. Brittany Menard, a 29-year-old brain cancer patient, became the face of the Right to Die movement in California as she and her family moved to Oregon to take advantage of its assisted suicide law. My name is Brittany Menard. I am 29 years old and I am terminally ill. I am dying and I refuse to lose my dignity. I refuse to subject myself and my family to purposeless, prolonged pain and suffering at the hands of an incurable disease. The new law in California goes into effect next year. Religious groups, including the Catholic Church, oppose the move and call it a dark day for California. Back to you, Ed. It all truly boils down to one or two very simple questions, and we're going to ask them right now. First up, Executive Director of the Life Legal Defense Foundation, staunchly in opposition to the California bill, Alexandra Snyder, and joined by the Vice President of the Death with Dignity National Center and former Oregon lawmaker who helped create the Oregon right to die, George Amy. I want to thank you both for being here, and we're going to ask a tough question right now. George, first of all, I'm going to come to you. What gives the government to right? That right to open the door for people to kill themselves and basically allow people to make that decision. Well, first of all, let me say that each state has a prohibition on assisting in a suicide. And in Oregon, we were the model state, the first state after the Supreme Court of the United States ruled um, that it was not a national uh, right or a state right except it left it up to each state to make that decision. They, the Supreme Court ruled that the, the <clears throat> states should do this on their own. Oregon was the first state to do that. Isn't the government then, though, giving people the right to kill themselves? No. It's what they're giving them the right is to make the decision as to what their final days should be like. Uh, whether or not they take that medicine is totally different than <clears throat> giving them the absolute right nationally or by state. Okay, now, Alexandra, let me come to you because here's the tough question. What gives you, what gives the government, what gives anybody the right to tell me when I cannot die? If I'm sick, if I'm ill, if I'm dying and I know it, shouldn't I have that right to make my own decision? Well, that is a good question, but and I would argue that the... The Constitution never contemplated that we would, that the state would exercise that right or give that right. The, uh, the Declaration of Independence talks about inalienable rights. Those are rights that not only can uh, the state not take away from a person, but a person actually can't give those rights away to somebody else. So we don't really have a right to decide when we're going to die, to, to give somebody else the right to take our lives from us. Okay, but shouldn't like we, we then, because if, if we're evolving us. as a society, though, Alexandra, shouldn't we be allowed to have that? Because we're coming to a time when people, shouldn't people be in charge of how they die? Not doctors. People, no. I would, I would argue no. And I think there are so many problems with this, with this bill, because then the argument doesn't become whether people should have the right to die, but shouldn't they exercise that right? And I think it's somewhat ridiculous to say that somebody's going to go through the trouble of getting a so-called aid to dying drug and, and then not take it. The, the purpose of the bill is to provide a way to prescribe the, the drug so that the person actually takes it and ends their life. So the, the control or the choice is not in having that medicine in hand. I wouldn't even say medicine, that, that drug in hand. Um, okay, let me I, stop I, you there because I want to get to George on this with a couple of minutes we have. George, with regard to this, the opponents, the people who don't like, like Alexandra, many others, they're worried this can open the door. This is premature suicide, coerced early death, overriding God's will. Shouldn't that come into the equation as well? Of course it is. That's why we put an opt-out provision in it. For people who have religious objections or moral objections or ethical objections, 
they do not have to access the law. We specifically said that. And in fact, uh, a lot of people don't. It's very seldom used. But for the thousands of people who are dying every year in agonizing suffering, they want this option. They find great comfort in knowing it's available to them, even if they never use it. And in fact, one out of three people who get the medicine never take the medicine. So these are people who find comfort in having it. So, uh, yeah, I uh, give that opt out. So, and I so, said to people with religious beliefs or any other beliefs. Alexandra, let me ask then finally, I only got about 30 seconds left. What about those people who are in excruciating pain? And it doesn't make a difference. You can give them all the medicine you want, but they said, I don't want to be in pain anymore. Shouldn't we have sympathy for them? Of course we should have sympathy for them. And I think we should develop, we should work on palliative care and, and hospice care and, and treatments and things like that to alleviate as much pain as we can. But ultimately, it is not the right of the state or any other individual to determine when a person actually reaches that moment of death. George, are you confident that this will eventually be the law in 50 states in America? Uh, within my lifetime, I can see half the states having it, and especially with the passage of California, which will have a huge impact on the rest of the nation. After all, 12 percent of the mm -hmm. U.S. population is in the state of California. I think what you're seeing here, folks, is the way this debate is going. It is very, it has great points on both sides, but it has very difficult points on other sides that we still have to get through. And we've all got to find a way to really make sure that there's dignity involved here at the end of the day. Alexander Snyder, George Amy, I want to thank you both for joining us. We will talk again. Stay with us. The fastest 60 minutes of news, the hard line continues.